Hello, my lovely YouTubers. So before we get into the virus portion of this video, I wanted to show you my Catacetum Grace Dunn, which is in bloom right now. I purchased it when it was in Spike, so I can't take credit for the blooms, but I'm really, really excited to have this one in my collection because I don't know what it is, but I'm crazy about orchids that have furry or fringed lips and I can't believe that I don't have any in my collection until now that have the furry or fringed lips. I really, really love this orchid because of that furry or fringed lip, so you can see it there. And it has a really interesting scent. I can't place it at all. I know I've smelled the smell. I've smelled the smell, the smelly smell that smells like I want to say pine needles for some reason. I don't know why. I know it's not pine needles and it's not sweet and it's not spicy. It's just sort of, I don't know. I wish I could describe the scent. I know when I smell it, I will immediately think of the Catacetum Grace Dunn, but these flowers are just like the size of a dime. They're not that big. I am much more crazy about the big blooms like on Catacetum pileatum, but I like these ones because they're cute and they're small and they're dainty and they have, they actually pack quite the scent. Uh, they're not as fragrant as some of my other Catacetums, but definitely they hold their own for having a small flower. I wasn't expecting such a punch in the face whenever I went into my cold room. I was like, what is that smell? And it was these guys. So that is the Catacetum Grace Dunn. So you can see that nice, soft, dainty pink. And of course, Catacetum Culture right now, I haven't watered this guy since I got him because no leaves. So even though you see blooms, the blooms are actually getting their energy from the uh, old bulb. So talking about viruses, this was something that has been bugging me and, mm, bugging, mm, that was a good pun, virus, bug. Uh, this is something that has been bugging me ever since Miss Orchid Girl commented on my video. I am one of those people where if I take an educational sort of class or I read about something, it really bothers me if there is evidence to the contrary. And I've been reading a lot of journal articles and I've been watching a lot of videos on the subject matter and it just so happened that after so many videos I came across a video I wasn't even watching a virus video it was actually a video about pests and their management and how pests can carry viruses and I was like oh my gosh this is the answer right here so the gentleman who was giving the video sort of educational talk he's very very well known in the orchid world not gonna give his name, but if you want more information, I will uh, give you his email and you are more than welcome to contact him yourself because that is what I did. I contacted him myself. I was really, really interested. I couldn't type fast enough in my email. And anyways, so he was talking about pests and how they can carry viruses and he was saying that aphids do have not been shown to carry viruses from plant to plant. And this was the kind of information that I was wanting because the other gentleman, as you know from my previous virus video, I tried contacting him through email because I wanted answers right then and there. And he never contacted me back. I'm sure I'll see him later. So when I do, I'll probably uh, talk to him and just get further confirmation, further understanding of what he was saying in his speech. But this gentleman emailed me right away I contacted him and I asked him about viruses and how they are transmitted and I was really curious because his statement and the other gentleman's statement said that aphids have not been shown to transmit viruses to their uh, sort of host plants, the orchid to orchid, you know, sort of thing. So it was really interesting to me because if you guys remember in my video, I don't know if you read the comments or anything, but Miss Orchid Girl had commented on my video and said that aphids were actually the number one suspect vector for the virus um, of certain orchid viruses like 
the tobacco mosaic or cymbidium um, or the yellow bean virus. So they were the number one suspect, but these two gentlemen with many, many years in the orchid world were saying that it was not. So I asked him for data and for their information, and I'm actually going to give you a direct quote from him so that there is no confusion and you can draw your own conclusions. That's really what we have to do as orchid growers. We may see information that looks really, really good, but you have to sort of cherry pick which information you're going to apply to your situation because everybody grows their orchids differently. Uh, Miss Orchid Girl grows her orchids completely differently from the way that I grow mine, and I'm sure that Brad grows his differently, obviously, because he has a greenhouse. So everybody is using their own techniques, what has worked best for them, and so that's really the takeaway message from this video that I want you guys to sort of process, is that what works for one person may not work for another. So in my videos, in my tutorials, I will give you the tools and it's up to you whether or not you would like to apply those tools to your arsenal. So in the email that I sent this gentleman, I stated that there was information floating around that aphids are a major vector for orchid viruses and I tossed around the name Agdia because that was the company that Miss Orchid Girl had mentioned, that they are a really well-known agricultural company, and also you can buy their little test strips to test for orchid diseases, orchid viruses, in your collection. And so I tossed that name around, and I also asked him if he could provide data or just more information in general about what he meant when he said that aphids have not been shown to be the major vector for viruses. And he mentioned that in his video, his informative video, he mentioned that the chewing insects. So all of the same things he was saying was exactly what the gentleman from my orchid society had been saying. So I was really interested to hear back from him and I'm just going to directly quote exactly what he said. So he told me, I know Agdia says that aphids transmit virus, but I do not know of a single properly controlled study where that has been shown to be the case and I don't think they can provide such a study. Aphid mouth parts are constructed like those of mosquitoes so that pumping something into a plant or animal becomes impossible. Mosquitoes are good bacteria and parasite vectors, but they are very poor virus vectors unless the virus can survive for long periods exposed to air. The same is going to be true for aphids. Chewing insects are another matter altogether, and thrips and cockroaches and caterpillars have clearly been demonstrated to pass virus around plants. So he was saying that aphids are sort of on the same level as mosquitoes, that they are sucking from their host and they're not necessarily pumping something in. Those chewing insects with their mouth parts, they can leave behind traces of the plant and that is how viruses can spread. So I understand when I think about it, it does make a lot of sense to me, but there's not enough information known about viruses to really make a definite sort of answer. And I think that's what I love about orchids so much is that information is always changing. I don't know if you guys saw my video, I did an update video, and in there I have an Encyclia polybulbin, and that name recently changed to Dynama polybulbin, so the species name actually changed. So with orchids, culture, care, it's always changing, uh, sometimes at a slow pace and sometimes at a fast pace. Obviously, the way we were growing orchids in the 1900s is not the same as we're growing them now. So there are constantly advances in the orchid world, and I hope that one day we will have a cure for orchid viruses because a lot of people, once they get a virus on their orchid, they immediately toss it out. If I do show to have a virus on one of my orchids, I don't even want to think about that day, but if one of my orchids does come down with a virus, I am not going to be one of those that throws it away. I'm just going to keep it separated from the rest of my collection and hope that there will be a cure for the virus and I'll still get to have that plant and I'll just get to apply the remedy and cure it of the virus. But that is way down along the road, I'm sure. 
So really the take home message is to separate any new plants that you get into your collection, quarantine them, make sure that there's no bugs in the potting media on the plants because if those insects, if it's an aphid that transmits a virus, or if it's a caterpillar that transmit a virus, whatever bug transmit a virus, you don't want that getting into your collection and ruining your plants. So I would say treat every insect like it's a loaded weapon. Just pretend that it has virus carrying capabilities and eliminate them all. Well, not all of them, but you know, the bad ones, the pests. Uh, but just treat all insects, that's what I plan to do since there is no definitive answer. Obviously you have one side of the story that says that aphids don't, and one side of the story that says aphids do. I don't know. But I'm just gonna treat all insects like they're the spawn of Satan and kill them mercilessly. Uh, so I recommend you guys doing the same. You can take my advice or leave it, it's up to you. But I was really excited. I learned a lot from that gentleman. And like I said, if you're wanting more information, I will link you below to my previous virus video. And I will also link you to Miss Orchid Girl's virus video because it is informative. And like I said, you can cherry pick which information you'd like to apply to your collection. And hopefully one day we will all be virus free. And with that, I will leave you guys. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one in the future. I will see you guys later.